Hey guys, Andrew Marsh here with DrewFit.com. I want to thank you guys for tuning in today. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the ultimate guide to mewing, perfecting it, um, frequently asked questions that I get, and other practices to implement to really get the most out of mewing. Now before I begin, I want to ask if you guys can please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like, share, comment, leave me feedback for future videos that you would like to see. It would be greatly appreciated. So first off, for those of you that don't know what mewing is, essentially it's the practice of perfect tongue posture. Now, how do we perfect mewing? For those of you that don't know, this is covered in a lot of videos, um, how you get your tongue to cover the entire roof of the mouth is you can do two things. Number one, you could say the word sing, because what this does when you put the I-N-G on there, um, consider this your upper palate and this is your tongue. When you say sing, what that does essentially is the ING puts the back of the tongue on the soft part of the palate, and then you whip the front of the tongue up to cover the entire rest of the palate up to the front part of the mouth where the teeth meet on the upper palate. And then you hold that position as long as you consciously can throughout the day and while you sleep. Now this is going to be difficult at first, but over time it becomes simpler and simpler. Um, another practice you can do is to smile with the tip of your tongue where your teeth and your front upper palate meet and then swallow saliva. Now what this does, again, upper palate, tongue, here's the front of the palate right here. Um, so you put the tip of the tongue right there and then you swallow saliva and then as you swallow, the tongue comes up and covers the rest of the palate, especially the hard to reach soft palate that a lot of people have trouble getting to. So those are two practices that you do. Now when you achieve that posture, you want to keep your lips closed, and then you also want to keep your teeth relatively close, not touching, but close. Now to dive into the frequently asked questions I get, now I took seven questions that I get all the time, and I'm going to answer them to the best of my knowledge. So number one, should my teeth touch, or should I change my bite when practicing mewing? Number one. No, your teeth should not touch. This could cause issues down the road. Um, people like to grind their teeth, um, and I just don't think it's a good thing to do. I know I said it in my other video, but what I've come to find, you keep them close, about a centimeter or two apart, uh, very close, but do not have them touch. Um, you're gonna experience much better results with this. And should I change my bite with this practice? And that's another big no-no, and I know I said, Perfect uh, teeth posture is to have your upper teeth slightly in front of your lower teeth. Um, but a lot of people suffer from maybe having an underbite or an overbite. And if you try to change too much too soon, it's going to experience things like TMJ or other jaw issues further down the road. So don't change your bite. Um, if you want to get your bite changed, I would really consult with a professional on how to do that. Um, so don't do it while practicing mewing um, if you could experience issues down the road. Now number two question I get a lot is, is soreness normal? And for the first couple days, two to three days after practicing mewing, yes, it is completely normal to experience. And that's because you are beginning to open up your upper palate and things are starting to realign. So you're going to experience um, some soreness. And the pain should subside. I've gotten a lot of people saying the pain subsides after two or three days. And that was the same for me. I think it took one or two days and it was gone. Um, so yes, soreness is normal for a couple of days. If it lasts a week, two weeks, stop this practice and consult with a professional on this and see what you can do about it going forward but I haven't heard of any cases going over a week or two weeks or anything like that, just a couple of days to maybe three or four. Um, number three question I get, is it normal to have an increase in saliva when practicing mewing? My answer is going to be yes. I'm not sure the science behind it, but I've gotten probably 100 plus comments asking this question because everybody is experiencing it, including myself. I'm not sure the science behind it, um, I don't think there's anything detrimental with having more saliva. I actually think it's a good response for your body to have. Um, so yes, in my opinion, it's normal. I'm not sure the science, so 
It's a 50-50 question. I think it's normal, and I haven't experienced any issues with it. Um, number four, can I practice this with a retainer or braces? Now, again, this is another one you want to consult with a professional about, but in my opinion, having good tongue posture is something you should do every day. Um, it's just like having good body posture, good neck posture. Why would you not want to do those things? Why would you not want to have good tongue posture? Will it mess with what your retainer or braces is trying to achieve? I don't think it's going to mess with it. I think it's just going to enhance it and make it better. But again, that's my opinion. I'm not 100% on that um, because I have never had braces. I may get them further down the road just because my teeth are really messed up and have been my entire life. So um, I will, if I get braces, I'm going to keep mewing. Um, but again, do what's best for you. Um, I would say practice mewing for a couple of days if you have braces or a retainer. And if you notice things are going south, stop it immediately and wait till the braces and retainer are gone. Um, if you don't notice anything bad, then keep it up. It's good tongue posture. You're supposed to practice this. Um, number five question I get a lot is, why is it so hard for me to breathe when practicing mewing? This is a question I get all the time, and it's a great thing because now... When you practice mewing, you are no longer a mouth breather, putting you into a fight or flight state. You are actually a nose breather, making you more calm and healthy. <clears throat> and the reason it is so hard to breathe is because we've been enabled. We've been breathing through our mouth for X amount of years and not breathing through our nose. <clears throat> so that airway may have shrunk or tightened up. And now that we're breathing through our nose, we're using muscles that we haven't used in how long consistently. So yes, it's going to be difficult at first um, to become a nose breather, and that's normal. It was normal for me. It took about two to three weeks, and now I can breathe through my nose all day long, no issues. Um, but you really need to allow it time to really open up the airway and strengthen those mus muscles of breathing through the nose. Um, so yes, it's going to be hard to breathe at first through the nose, but over time, it gets easier. Number six question I get how fast should I expect to see changes? Now, this is a question that has a lot of cofactors to play into it, um, such as age, such as facial bone development, um, such as how long are you practicing, how much conscious effort are you actually putting into it. So a lot of cofactors play into this. So in my guess, and this is just a guess, I would say you wouldn't see changes for probably six months to even a year, um, depending on how bad your... Um, bone structure is in your mouth. For me, it's going to take maybe a year, maybe two years because um, my teeth are came, came in bad, especially the left side of my mouth kind of caved in my entire life. So I'm working on pushing that out. And who knows, it could take up to three years, but I do know that this practice has helped me a lot. It's strengthened my jaw muscles and it's beginning to give my face a natural facelift. So I'm not too concerned with um, the time length. It's something that I'm going to be practicing for the rest of my life. Um, but how fast should you expect to see changes? It all depends. Um, I've had young people about 16 to 22 years old send me pictures on Instagram of the progress that they've made in just two or three months. And um, they're lucky because their facial uh, structure has not been fully developed yet. So the more conscious effort they put into this practice, the faster they are going to see results as compared to somebody like me who's 30 years old. So. There's a lot of factors at play in. There's, they're doing it in two to three months. It is, some people, it may take longer. Um, and number seven question that plays into that, does age matter? That's an absolute yes. Like I was just talking about, um, your bones fuse together the older you get in your face. So it may not even have an impact depending on how far down the road you are. But does that mean you should give up the practice? Absolutely not. This is a normal practice for the human body and it's going to make us a healthier being because we're going to become nose breathers with strong tongue posture. So it's, like I said, it's just like having good body posture or neck posture. It's just something you want to do for the remainder of your life. Um, so it can only add benefits. It won't be really detrimental to your health, um, in my opinion. Now, on to how to increase your success rate with the practice of mewing. Like I said, Practicing mewing isn't going to radically change your life, give you this amazing jawline, make you look like Brad Pitt in his prime. There are things that you have to implement outside of mewing that are going to help get the most out of this practice. Number one, 
lower your body fat percentage, build muscle, and just live an overall healthier lifestyle. And you will begin to experience a lot more out of this practice. Um, simply because the practice of mewing, a lot of people are doing it to build that strong jawline and give them that facelift. But if you're extremely overweight, you won't see much benefit to this until you start to shed the body fat and really get that uh, chiseled jawline that you're looking to achieve. Um, so live a healthy lifestyle, number, number one, first and foremost. Number two, practice good body posture and neck posture. Because just like with our tongue posture, lifting our face and giving us a strong uh, jawline, you also want to practice good body posture because what that does is that makes your muscles come in a lot better, a lot fuller, um, and just makes you look a lot healthier as compared to having a poor slouched um, posture. And another thing you want to do is good neck posture. Um, a lot of us have cell phones today, including myself, and I catch myself at times just constantly looking down and rolling my head forward, and this results into people having um, forward head posture, and not only is that not healthy for you, but it also makes you look um, like a worm, kind of, um, who does, you don't look as optimal as you can unless you have great body posture. So um, I know a lot of people are doing this for the look side of things, but also for the health side of things, this plays a major impact having good body posture and neck posture. And uh, a little uh, side part on this is a good neck posture exercise I actually came across in one of Mike Mew's videos on Orthotropic's YouTube channel is to stand up against a flat wall, um, put your head back, the uh, flat part of your head on the wall, and you look up and down. And do that about 20 to 30 times um, uh, reps um, a couple times a day, and you will notice that your, your neck posture begin, begins to come backward, and you begin to open up, and you just feel a lot better, and you begin to look a lot better. So number two, practice good body posture and neck posture. Number three, um, practice tongue chewing and gum chewing, um, and you can do both of those with gum. Um, these things are great at one, strengthening your tongue so the practice of mewing becomes a lot easier to cover the entire upper palate and to hold it there throughout the day. And gum chewing essentially strengthens the muscles of the jaw because what we're trying to do with this practice is give you a uh, facelift and give you a stronger jawline. So chewing gum strengthens the muscles of the jaw, giving you that chiseled um, Brad Pitt type jawline. Um, and again, always go with sugar-free gum, not with all the crap added to it, um, aspartame, artificial sh sweeteners, whatever. Um, stick with sugar-free gum if you can. Um, and then tongue chewing, essentially. There's a video on that very briefly. Um, you ball the, the gum up right behind your front of your teeth and your hard palate. And what you do is you push on that gum with the front of your tongue and flatten it out over the roof of your mouth. And this strengthens the tongue. Um, and that's another exercise that's going to add major benefit to mewing. Now, number four is to have a mindset for success. Now, I'm not going to dive too deep into this, but when you're practicing mewing, be optimistic about the practice. Be optimistic about everything you do in life that's going to potentially benefit your life. Have a good mindset. It makes the process a lot easier, a lot smoother, and results come a lot more rapidly when you shift your mindset from not being... Uh, fearful, scared, angered, whatever. Um, be optimistic um, and ha have fun with it and you know just build a mindset for success and you're going to see a lot better results a lot faster. So that's basically it guys. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to try to cut this video short um, as short as I can. I mean uh, it's almost at 15 minutes so I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to subscribe and if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to drop them below. Thanks for watching.